Good morning, New Hope. This is the day in which the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, my brothers and sisters, we will ask that our praise team would give us our opening selection for today. scripture up uh, from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, Philippians, the third chapter, Philippians, the third chapter, and the very first verse, Philippians 3 and verse 1, and it reads, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord, for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. And I want to talk to you this morning about real joy. Real joy. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, has become our Lord once again to break the bread of life. As always, I'm not necessarily asking you for a good message, but rather for a message that will do some good. To the extent, Lord, all of us might be blessed. Let it become less and less of me and more and more of thee. Let it become none of me and all of thee so that you and you alone will get the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Real joy. As the Apostle Paul prepares his final words to the Philippian believers, he encourages them to let the Lord give them joy. He would say this again at the real end of this letter, 
in Philippians 4 and 4. In this short epistle or letter, a form of the word joy occurs 12 times. What is true joy or real joy? Often happiness is mistaken for joy, but the two are very different. Inward joy comes from knowing and trusting God. Happiness comes as a result of pleasant circumstances. Inward joy is lasting. Happiness is temporary because it is based on external circumstances. Paul was able to rejoice in spite of his suffering because he knew and trusted in God. He did not allow his circumstances to discourage him. To remain joyful, we should remind ourselves daily of God's love for each and every one of us. Do you know that God loves you today? And that God wants you to be joyful? He wants you to have joy in your life. The joy of knowing Christ kept Paul level-headed. No matter how high or low his circumstances, Paul also learned that rejoicing places and keeps a person in the very presence of God. No matter what confronts us, no matter how terrible the trial, we have the blessed assurance that our Lord is watching over us. We know that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul has some very encouraging words for us to let us know that when we're going through our trials, we can have joy because our trials are just a test. And like the storms of life, trials don't last always. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God will always provide a way or means of escape. But he's not going to force us to take that way of escape. But he's going to make that way available to us. Amen. So that we can have joy no matter what we're going through. In Philippians 4, verses 11 through 13, Paul says, Not that I speak in regard of need, for I have learned, whatever state I am, to be content. Sometimes we'll say, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. But in so many instances, we find ourselves grumbling and complaining because we don't have what someone else has. But yet we'll make the statement, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. But Paul says, I've learned. He says, this thing didn't come easily for me, but I had to learn this through a school of hard knocks. He says, I know how to be abased. And I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned mm -hmm. both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He said, listen, I, I know that it's not about me, but it's all about Christ. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that brings us back to St. John 15 and 5, where Jesus declares that I am the true vine, and you are the branches. And at the close of that verse, he says, if we abide in him, and he in us, that we can do all things. For he says, because without me, you can do nothing. So Paul was reminded of what Jesus says. Without him, Paul and you and I can do nothing. But he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul knew where his real joy came from. 
In Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, Paul says, Who shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It's great news in this passage. He says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors yes. through him who loved us. When God shook us this morning and opened our eyes to the light of a brand new day, my brothers and sisters, I knew that I was already victorious, not because of who I think I am, but I knew I was victorious because I, who I, of who I know. Notice the word says that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Mm -hmm. Paul goes on to state that for I am persuaded, I am determined, nothing can shake my faith and my belief in God. Mm -hmm. He says, I can't be shaken simply because you can't make me doubt him well. because I know so much about him. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth nor any other thing in the created order shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. That alone should be enough for us to have joy deep down in our souls. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Nehemiah was inspired to write. Then he said to me, I said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those who have nothing, who nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. God wants us to have joy. Because when we find joy, true joy, lasting joy in him, he will also strengthen us for the task that he has set before us. My brothers and sisters, we are great sinners. But Jesus is a greater savior. Yes, sir. Yeah. Therefore, we are forever secure in the keeping power of Almighty God. We can always rejoice in the Lord no matter what confronts us. My brothers and sisters, when I think of the goodness of Jesus well. and all that he's done for me, my soul rejoices and I cry out, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I have joy because of what Jesus has done yes, for me. Yes, in the gospel as recorded by St. Luke, uh, in this 10th chapter of St. Luke, you will find a story about where Jesus, now we know that he had 12 disciples that became 12 apostles, but he actually had quite a few disciples. The word disciple simply means a follower of. And in Luke chapter 10, you will find where Jesus uh, sent out a commission, 70 of his disciples, to go into every city in which he would later on visit himself. In Luke 10, starting at verse 17, you will find where the 70 has returned to Jesus to give an account of their stewardship and their ministry. It says, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by, shall, by any means shall hurt you. He says, in spite of this though, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the demons are subject to you in my name, but I'll tell you what you should actually rejoice because of. You should rejoice because your names are written in heaven. My brothers and sisters, isn't it good news? That's something for us to be joyful about. Amen. That our names are written in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. And we don't have to worry about the devil or anyone else blotting out our names out of the book of life. He says they return with joy saying, Lord, the demons are subject to us through and by your name. Then Jesus put a spin on this thing and says, let me tell you something about your name. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that the demons are subject 
to you through and by my name, I want you to know that you have a name. Yes, sir. And your name is written up in glory. And one day he says in the book of Revelation, he's going to give us a white stone, an amulet, with a new name written. Where no one knows that name except he and the one who receives it. I don't know about you, but it gives me joy when I think about it. I'm going to have a brand new body and a brand new name. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Jesus says, or Peter says rather, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try us. My brothers and sisters, whenever we are going through our trials and our triple tribulations, we have to remember that you would not have a testimony if you didn't first have a test. The first four letters in the word testimony is T-E-S-T. -E we have to go through some things in order to tell folk about the goodness of Jesus. Well, we wouldn't know that Jesus could heal if we never experienced sickness. My brothers and sisters, it's good to know that we are serving a savior who can do all things. He says, don't think it strange concerning the fiery trials which are to try us as though some strange thing has happened to you. He wants us to understand that someone has experienced some of the same things that we are going through now. But God made a way. Jesus made a way for them so that they could bear it and make it through. He says, listen, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Remember now, he partook of humanity so that we could partake of his joy. John 15 and 11 says, these things Jesus says I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full, that your joy may be complete, that you are filled to the rim or to the brim with my joy. Whenever we are filled with the joy of the Lord, we don't have to worry about Satan trying to plant those little thoughts in our heads to cause us to doubt what the master says to each and every one of us. He wants us to be full of his joy. Psalms 5 and verse 11 says, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be full of you. The righteous are those who trust in the Lord that no matter what the outward circumstances or the inward circumstances may appear to be, we know that Jesus is greater than anything that confronts us. Psalms 30 verses 4 and 5. It says, sing praise to the Lord. You can be going through some stuff, my brothers and sisters, but you can start praising God. You can start praising him and praise your way through. The devil don't want us to praise God. He, want us, he wants to steal our praise and our joy in the Lord. But the psalmist declared, sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks to the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but he promises us that joy, yeah. God's unspeakable joy, will come in the morning. Notice, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. But joy. joy is coming. Yes, it is. All we have to do is just hang in there yes. and don't throw in the towel. Paul says in Philippians 4 and 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And in closing, Romans 15 and 13, Paul gives us a benediction. Romans 15 and 13. Now may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in the hope in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. An inner gladness, that peace that God promises us, is an inner gladness, a deep-seated pleasure. It is a cheerful heart that leads 
to cheerful behavior. It becomes contagious whenever we allow the joy of the Lord to fill each and every one of us. Whenever that joy starts radiating on the inside and makes its way to the outside, people will want to hang around you because there's something about hanging around a child of God. I've got joy, unspeakable joy. And the joy that I had, the world did not give it. And I promise you, we can't let the world take it away. Whenever you have real joy, real joy, you can experience the happiness that only comes from knowing a savior like Jesus Christ. So my brothers and sisters, if you don't know Jesus today in the pardon of your sins, we're extending the opportunity right now for you to get to know him. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And what better day and time for you to come than right now to turn your life over to him and let God begin to fill you with joy, joy unspeakable joy. Would you come this morning? Would you come? Give one of the ministers your hand, but be sure and very sure that you give your heart to the Lord. If you want peace and if you want joy, my God has it. He has it on the shelves in glory. And you don't ever have to worry about God running out. You know how sometimes when a storm, they say it's headed our way, by the time you get to the grocery stores, all of the grocery store shelves are empty, cleaned up, they've cleaned off the shelves. But when you need peace and you need joy, my God has it. And you don't ever have to worry about him running out. He has an endless and endless supply. Would you come? We're going to ask the praise team to reassemble. We're going to ask them to give us another selection. And then we're going to have our youth that's going to come and do a praise dance for us on this morning. The praise team is going to give us a selection. And then the praise, our youth will come and do a praise dance for us on this morning. Let's give our praise team another hand as they reassemble. Amen. And we are going to have communion on today. Our praise team is going to bless us with a selection. Then our youth are going to come and bless us with a praise dance. Amen.
come. I want the praise team to hold up. And if you would, uh, I didn't forget about this, uh, Mother Snow, but today is Deacon Stone's 99th birthday. So we're going to sing happy birthday to him at this time. We're going to sing happy birthday to Deacon Stone. This is his 99th birthday. He's 99, 99 years young. So Amen. We want to sing happy birthday to our oldest, our eldest member. Amen. <laughs> 